What's up YouTube? Today is July 14th and I just had my first monarch visit the garden that I saw today so I decided to check the plants and I found some little eggs here. Here we are. I cut them off the plant, put them in this little container with a little very damp paper towel just to keep the leaves fresh for the next three or four days. They should dry up but by that time it'll be okay but anyway I'm just underneath the leaves on the underside of the leaves let me find one here. Oh, there's one. So you just look for the underside of the leaves and you'll see this tiny little yellow white dot. There you go. This little tiny little white dot here. And that is a monarch egg. So I'm just getting my scissors cutting on either side of that, cutting the little square out just to keep them safe. So no predators or uh, parasites or anything like that get to them while they're still eggs. I guess I'll do a little video of me uh, keeping monarchs here. This is kind of cool. I tried to do it last year, but I left the uh, I left the caterpillars just on the plant out in the open like this, and I think uh, predators or parasites or something got to them. But I have a little bug cage. You'll see that in a future video. But I'll probably make another video in a week or two, show you guys uh, the little caterpillars, and I'll probably have a ton more of these guys, the little eggs and stuff. So I'll have a constant cycle, but. All right, it is Sunday. Um, it's been six days since they were on this plant. All of them since they were first in SAR were all on this plant. And uh, you can see they stripped it today. I came out and it was completely stripped and they were just eating down the stalks here. So I got another plant. I got a few more over there. They're all wilted because of the sun. You know, it's super hot out, but got this guy in the shade here. I got them all in these little dishes. Just so I could, because they were just all over the place trying to find food inside of here. Climbing up the walls and stuff. I had a few die. But look at them all. This guy is, you know, the size of my pinky finger so. Some of them are really big. And some of them are still second, third instar. Look at them fighting or whatever. They don't, you know, caterpillars don't like to be close. But when they're starving, they're going to, what the heck is this? I don't know. I should probably take this out some type of cocoon of some sort but um yeah check them out guys they're looking really good there's probably geez i don't even know i have to get a count but 30 something like that there's a lot in here definitely a lot and they're all underneath there and you know underneath the leaves and stuff but and they're still eating they're still munching around and doing their thing but um yeah in about another week i think they should all be you know be in their chrysalis Starting to uh, come out. There's little gizman. There's me. Monarch caterpillars and the milkweed itself is poisonous to dogs. So if you do have dogs, or cats, or whatever, just be careful. <laughs> you know, but check them out, guys. Monarchs were just put on the endangered species list again. So not in my backyard. They're thriving back here. They're doing really good. So it is cool. Here's just a little quick clip of what, you know, monarch caterpillars face in the wild. They just face tons of different pests, predators, parasites. So 
So there's a little spider there. Something happened to this guy. He's all dried up for some reason, just standing straight up. It's kind of weird. But I found him here because all this poop. See all those little black spots? There's the spider there. But see all these little black dots and just little holes in the leaves is how you find them, really. And then you just look on the underside or whatever side, but it's a native milkweed. I'm growing tropical milkweed that you, you know, you've seen. That's what they're eating, but either one they can eat perfectly fine for them. But this one's looking all beat up because I took it from the woods. Just one, I took a few plants just to see if they'd make it in my garden here. And they're doing all right. They're just a little bit in shock, but. I'm just excited to see them all hanging up on the roof and getting ready to uh, turn to awesome butterflies. And I'll just let them go right here in the yard. But if I could recommend two or three flowers for you to put in your garden just to attract butterflies, you know, have that relationship with butterflies to come back. And I don't know, somehow they just know where the good stuff is. But zinnia is by far like a huge pollinator and a huge nectar source for uh, butterflies and stuff. So zinnia is probably by number one. Just a beautiful flower and it's great for pollinators and uh, butterflies and all that. But um, number two would be Tithonia or Mexican sunflower. It's just another one that has a lot of pollen and nectar down inside there. Good for bees and butterflies. Number three I would say would be milkweed. Surprisingly or not, even if it's not for monarchs, every kind of butterfly and bee likes this. It has tons of nectar in these flowers here. So and they're just, they last a little, a pretty long time. And here's another round of the buds coming in. And for credits, I like Black Eyed Susan too. They're really cool. And butterflies seem to like them. And I gotta put this in here because everything loves these hummingbirds and butterflies. This is called Spanish Flag. It's also called Firecracker Flower. And I think there's one other name, but if you find Spanish Flag, this is what it is. And it's a vining plant just vines all over the place so I vined it over my plants here but once these open up they'll get a little taller they'll probably get about eight inches taller and this will all just be covered in uh, Spanish flag flowers but this is great for hummingbirds and butterflies I absolutely love it verbena is a big one as well verbia verbena however you want to pronounce it this is called I think it's called lantana I think but this is another great one just easy nectar source for them. And here we go, there they all are. Zinnia, Tithonia, Cosmos as well. It's just any kind of signal. These are just petunias. These are more just for show. All types of insects and birds have really good eyesight. And just any kind of red or orange like this just sticks out like a sore thumb amongst the green. There's a bee up there having a bath in the pollen. And I just want to show you guys this. Look, this is the next morning. All the caterpillars. Look, they're just climbing all over the... Climbing on the inside of the thing. Alright guys, check it out. The sun's almost about to set. And I got a few up here hanging up already. Got four have made their little silk buttons that they're hanging from. See, they're hanging their little classic J shape. And I got these guys down at the bottom here. I gotta give them some more leaves. Probably clean their poop out. But um, yeah, these smaller ones that are kind of on the side, I just lightly pull them off and place them back in the bowl just so they know where the food is and stuff, you know. Just pull them off the side and put them there. I don't think they like it, but whatever. <laughs> oh, guys, I just missed it. He just shed his skin, turned into a chrysalis. Look at them all. All right, it's been four days since I made the last video. Um, you can see I have uh, like what, 15 or 16 up here in chrysalis. And you know, every day there's more that are just making their little silk button and hanging up here again. And then we still got quite a bit down here too, but they're a decent size, so they should turn in the next few days and go up to the top. The chrysalis are beautiful too. They're like, they have these golden little hint to them. 
So in uh, about six or seven more days, we should have the first one come out. And I'll be here. Look at this guy. I think this is the most caterpillars I've had hanging up here in one night. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There's one back there. And I think there's only a few more down here. I'll have to check tomorrow, but... So I'm at the woods behind my house, conveniently named Joe's Woods. And I wanted to show you the native milkweed here in New Jersey. And here it is right here, the leaf. And obviously, you can tell with any milkweed, you break the stem off and you can see the milky substance that comes out. But here it has some seed pods. I'm gonna take these seed pods when they finally break open. It's like white fluff with like one little seed on it, but you can see there's about a dozen or so here, a dozen plants over here. Walking the dog. This is some of the stuff I've been taking. If I didn't have any tropical milkweed, I would have just came back here, took a leaf or two every day and gave it to the caterpillars. But yeah, that's native milkweed on the East Coast here. There we go. All right, guys, today is uh, August 4th. It's been exactly 10 days since the first chrysalis formed. And here we go. We have the first five monarchs. I think they're all female. All their wings look great. Here's the old shedding, or here's the old chrysalis. And um, I stuck a little lantana flower in there just to see if they were hungry enough, but it doesn't seem they really care. 10 days, I think 10 to 12 days is the estimated hatch time, but it's been nice and hot and warm. And today's even, you know, a super hot day, like 95. So I think I'm gonna wait until after the afternoon, maybe about one or two o'clock to release them. So it's not scorching hot, but they're all looking great, guys. Look at that. Let's see if I can get one on my finger. There we go. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, they're getting feisty. <laughs> but this is so awesome. This is like one of the coolest life cycles, I think. Just think about it. You go from the size of a pinhead, and then about a week, you're the size of a pinky finger, you know, compared, you know, but for a bug, I mean, that's just crazy. That's like an infant baby going to the size of like a blue whale, you know, in about a week, which is pretty crazy to think about just the scale. And then, I don't know, just something fascinating about them being in this chrysalis, just like being in like a liquid form somehow and then turning into these awesome butterflies. I'm happy I could help the monarchs this year. I'm going to continue to do this every single year, I think. But I just wanted to make a video on it my first year for anyone else who's doing this. Maybe give you some tips. But they look like they're all female. You can tell by their wings. These thicker lines at the bottom of their wings. That indicates a female. And a male would have thinner lines. And a little dot. Almost kind of like this one right here. But that's still a female. Yeah, guys, first five. I think one night we had like 10 or 12 chrysalises form in one night. So in a few days, I should have uh, 10 or 12 monarchs in this enclosure, which is super cool. And I just put a few paper towels down at the bottom because they excrete this liquid when they come out of their chrysalis that they uh, have built up. But I think maybe one or two has gone bad here because these are the ones that fell accidentally to the bottom. And so I just kind of tied them up as best I could. But you can see like this one and this one on the end don't look too good. But it doesn't matter. I mean, overall, that's a pretty good ratio. About, what do I have? Maybe like 30 in here. 35, I think, chrysalises. And I'll definitely get like a final count, obviously, on how many monarchs I release. But... And one of my chickens just laid an egg. You can hear <laughs> Yeah, guys, I'm going to end the video now. Like I said, I'm going to release them. I'll get some footage of that, but I think this is going to be the end of the video. I really appreciate you guys watching and learning about the monarchs with me. And just amazing. I don't know. They're super cool. So, yeah, I'll get a little video of me releasing them, of course, and this will be the end here of the video. It's definitely a longer video, so if you are watching to the end, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um... 
yeah guys that's gonna be it thanks for watching again and uh save the monarch I, 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 I,